Hey, praise the Lord to the church today and to all that are watching online today. Let me be the first, as I was last week, let me be the first this week to tell you not Merry Christmas, but a Happy New Year. I hope you had a fantastic Christmas. I know you did. Hope uh, your family time was fantastic and uh, you just had a very safe and memorable Christmas to a very unique 2020. But we are looking ahead and we're excited about what God is going to do in the coming year. Amen. So this is our uh, New Year's service and we want you to be blessed. I do want to remind you, Lord willing, we will be coming back um, the very first Sunday in January. So please stay tuned to our WhatsApp and uh, we'll post some things online and let you know how this is going on. We have a special speaker that day. And uh, I believe you're going to be blessed by him. Excited. I'm excited about today. I'm excited about preaching the word today. I'm excited about what we have uh, to minister to you and to your family. But first and foremost, would you stand with me? I think it's critical for us to go before the Lord in prayer once again. And uh, I am uh, just thrilled to be able to close this year out in a very similar fashion uh, to how we begin this year in context to the word of the Lord. And I need God to help me preach this message, and I need this message to fall on good ground. That's what I need in the Holy Ghost today. And of course, we'll continue to pray for the needs of the body and um, to those that are in our circle of influence. And I believe God has something great in store for the church. I hope you believe that as well. And when I say church, I'm not just um, signifying this local body, but the church, and the kingdom of God in general. Amen. Let's go before the Lord, and then we'll spend a few moments in worship. And we'll just love on him a little bit and express how good he is. Jesus, thank you for keeping this church safe this week. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the miraculous hand of God. You are always there. You are always faithful. Even through a very challenging year, even through a... A year that was uncertain with a lot of unknowns. It's been a year of ups. It's been a year of downs. But you have ever been constant. And we're so thankful that we have uh, we have a guiding, never moving. You are never moving. You are every day the same. And I appreciate that about you. I need you. I love you. I honor you. I bless the name of the Lord today. Would you speak to our hearts? Speak to this blessed church. Give us direction. God, I pray that you would empower us, that you would uh, you would just give us boldness at this hour. I don't want to enter 2021 the same way that I entered 2020. I want to enter this, this new year with new expectancy. I want to enter new doors. I want to enter new opportunities, and I believe you have those for your people. We're asking you these things in the name of Jesus, and we believe in you, God. Everybody said, in Jesus' precious name, amen. If you are standing, you can be seated. Amen. We're going to ask you to worship the Lord. God bless you today as we worship his great name. In the morning, you sing over me. And I receive your mercy. Faithfulness is clear to see. It's constant every day. In the morning you sing over me. And I receive your mercy. Your faithfulness is clear to see like the sunrise constant every day and every breath I breathe an invitation to believe you are creating something good though this season doesn't tell my story I know you'll move mountains for me you're just that good, so I'll give thanks to God when I don't have enough. Cause 
he's more than enough and he knows what i need i'll give thanks to god when i don't have enough because he's more than enough and he knows what i need he always knows what to believe you're working in the waiting though the future isn't clear to me I'll trust you Is he enough? Come on, somebody. Is he enough? I believe he is. He's enough to have carried us through this year. He hadn't changed. He still sits on the throne. He's ever faithful. Come on, somebody. He's good. Praise God. I remember Jonathan Bower Smith. I remember walking into his, um, his hospital room just mere hours, if you would, less than a day. It was about a half a day from being, I want to say it was somewhere around 80, 70 to 80 percent of his entire body was third degree burns. It was a, it was an unbelievable sight initially. God did quite a miracle in his life, but I remember walking into his room 
and um, they kept him unconscious for uh, a couple weeks. Um, They would have to revive him every day just in that burn unit. It was just a crazy, crazy uh, appearance. And the more it went on, the more critical his condition was, and the more critical his condition was, the more opportunity there was for some form of um, infection to set in. They were just so afraid during the first couple days, but he just kept getting better and better and better and better, and prayer kept going and going and going, and Brother Martin was there, and when we walked into the room, Brother Martin said, uh, Jonathan, he said, he's a good God. I remember what he said. He said, he's a good God. And Jonathan was finally able to speak, and he said very, uh, very gingerly, he said, yes, Brother Martin, and he's good at being God. And I, I want to tell somebody, he's not only good, or he's not only a good God. You might need to hear this. He's good at being God. He knows what he's doing. And we still have questions. We're still here. We're still at this point where things are lingering and we're wondering how things are going to work. We're still there. But I'm telling you, he's good. He is as good now as he has ever been. Amen. And he is as faithful now as he has ever been. And do not allow anything, don't allow anything that's going on to change your understanding and your perception of how good God is. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to uh, thank you once again for being faithful online. And I know it's been challenging this month. I've missed you. And I'm excited about coming back into the house of the Lord. Barring nothing changes, we'll be here and we'll celebrate together and worship together. And uh, you'll see some things on our WhatsApp this week. And we'll make sure that uh, you're well informed. So look towards that. Look toward our social media. And um, just come believing. We're going to um, not only come back together, but during our first fruit service, we're going to give some direction on what we're going to try to accomplish through prayer and fasting. So that's going to be the great initiative of the church today. For the first, uh, well, it's going to be an ever-growing culture, but specifically as a body, we're going to have um, things on site here at the church today, and of course, ask for things to be inside your home as well. So please be very, very, uh, stay very, very in tuned and be very sensitive to the days ahead. Um, so this year, if you have, um, if you have forgotten. We haven't revisited it in a very long time. Um, Perhaps it's been a little too long that we have revisited our theme for the year. But it still reigns uh, very true and um, it's still very relevant. So we started this year off our Vision Sunday. Um, We started it off with our theme for 2020. And that theme, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about that. We spent a lot of time uh, going into that. And so we're going to talk about that again. Before we do, we're going to say a word of prayer and ask God to guide us through. But I pray that this message to close this out will spark, re-spark some attention to not only what was important in 2020, but how this is going to play a role in 2021. So as you will close your eyes with me, let's pray together in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you very much. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, for revealing unto us what your desire for this church was on this great year. It's been a challenging year, but we're excited. I'm excited because I know that you are building off of this year, that this year was not a filler year. It's not a bumper year. No, this year was very strategic. You led us, you guided us, and I believe that you are ever leading us into the great beyond. And we are anticipating, we're opening opening ourselves up for what you have for us. We believe the greatest things are in store, and we're excited about it. Everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. I appreciate Uh, the Youngs for doing such a great job the last few weeks. Um, My son Landon 
uh, who has been on the uh, at the helm of the video and um, Josh Fugate has just been instrumental these last few weeks in giving our AVL team a break. Uh, Alicia Ammons was helping us. She was out of town. Uh, but And all those that came in-house just to uh, be a blessing. My wife, who is such a blessing to, obviously, this church, plays a critical role um, as the lead pastor of this church. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. She pastors me, so obviously she's the lead pastor of the church today. Uh, but she plays such a fantastic role um, in this congregation. And um, she's been behind me for 12 years, beside me for 12 years uh, while we've pastored this church. And I am very, very grateful for her. I don't know if any of you still have your coin, your treasure. And um, mine has stayed with me throughout the course of this year, and um, listen, if you still have yours, how cool would it be wherever you are to just go ahead and take a picture of that, upload it to your social media, and um, talk about it, talk about this year, talk about how God has led you in, in the ways of the treasure. We have seen some great things this year, despite COVID, our church has grown, our social media presence has been a blessing, our online platform has really reached out. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I was talking to um, our uh, our missionaries, um, the the Summers family, and we had a an opportunity to get together. And uh, during that conversation, they were discussing with me how that they shared a message, um, or uh, I think it was the entirety of a service, which you know it's been a little bit different the last uh, the last month or so. But they shared a service, and through that service, uh, the message has gone forth, and it was shared to a friend of hers in a hospital. And as they were in the hospital, a young man that had worked there, I believe, in that hospital was dealing with some things, going through some things. And that precious individual shared this specific message, watched it with him. Um, and as they were there, um, at the end of the message, he was uh, found himself underneath the uh, the spirit of the Lord, and she, very weakened in her state, reached over, laid her hands, I believe, on the shoulder of this young man, and he received the gift of the Holy Ghost in the hospital room. And I'm telling you, these are the things that God is doing, and the God is not going to be confined to a facility. It's not going to happen. And I believe that this is just a, uh, a, another example of the opportunity that we have as a representation of the church today here at the church today. We have an opportunity to allow this gospel. It's happening. People are having um, uh, conversations on their job. They're having conversations in their family. Their families coming back. People are being inquisitive about the things of God. They're wanting to know. They're looking up. They're, they're, they're being shaken in this last hour, in this last day. And we need to be ready. We need to be available in, in season. Uh, we need to be ready to give, to give an example. We need to be ready to, to look into the word of the Lord and share and show the things of God. We are going to to have our finest hour in this last day. Can I say it one more time? We're going to have our finest hour in this last day. No matter what is compressed upon us, no matter what is pushing against us, the church does not fold like a corporation when it's pressured. The church thrives when it's under pressure. That's the way it has been. You can't kill this thing. You can't silence this thing because God said, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. You remember that. We just talked about that a few weeks ago. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. And so it's with great excitement that I preach to you the same thought process that I preach to you on our very first Vision Casting Sunday, I'm preaching to you about the treasure. I'm going to remind you before we exit 2020 
what it really means to be looking to the field. Amen. I uh, just happened today to be studying, and as I was studying, I did not even try to Google it. I did not even try to uh, to try to, to to look for it. It wasn't even the question. Uh, I was trying to look for something else in my study, and as I was looking for that, it popped up. And when it popped up, I thought, nah, there's no way that this can be right. And so what I did is I purposely asked the question that I felt like needed to be asked in order to see if this answer truly came up. And I thought it was quite humorous uh, and a little bit tragic all in the same breath. And so I googled what is the motto for 2020? And before uh, Josh brings the slide up, I, I just put in there, what is the motto for 2020? And it came up. And then I put 2020 motto, and then it came up. And then I put another question in that was a similar question, but to see if it came up the same way, and it did. And I don't think it's, I don't think it's something that uh, everybody got together and a survey went out. I never got a survey, but... Um, but uh, apparently, this has become the motto of 2020. And truly, I understand why. So I'm not coming down and preaching and getting on a soapbox, and I'm not going to do that. Um, it'd be easy to do and be fun to do, actually. But I'm not going to do it. Rather, I understand why this would be the motto of 2020. But truly, if there was a motto for 2020 that truly showed and revealed the nature of where we are as a people... And tied into what Paul was trying to warn Timothy about in that second book, when he said people will be lovers of themselves, I realize, again, I'm just tying the knot here. I'm just building a bridge, if you would, trying to say here's this and here's that and look where we are. I understand the pandemic. I understand the social unrest. I understand that political realm that was just in, uh, just chaotic and, 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 and just honestly, all these things combined as one. It's just been, it's been a nightmare and, uh, the, you know, the world is worn out. But truly, if, if there could ever be a day, an hour in which we were able to say, my goodness gracious, look at that. Look what Paul told Timothy to be mindful of this prophetic uh, epistle that was written, we can look at this motto and we can say, truly, we are living in these hours. The motto for 2020, and it's I wrote it in exactly the same form in which it was it was revealed to me, simply is, I'm sorry, and then it was marked out, I have to take care of me. And that is the motto of 2020. I didn't make it up. I didn't try to look for it. It just found me. But truly, we are living in an hour and a day in which people are trying their best to take care of what is theirs. And I understand. Again, I see it. I'm not validating it. But I'm saying it is frightening to think that we are in an hour in which, no matter what is coming against us, this is how we are living. This is how our reach is going forth. And it is critical for the church, not just the church today, but the church in general. Whether we are resident here, resident overseas, it, this is a global thing. This is a global impact. We are living in an hour. It's not just what America is dealing with. We are dealing with this on a global scale. And we have to figure out how our message rises above the racket of all that is going on in the world. We have to understand and we have to work through and we have to biblically get back to these principles in the Word of God that are sound, that are right, that are revealing, and that will take us into this end-time harvest. Because I believe, and I know that I'm a part of a church that also believes, that we are supposed to be a light in this last hour. And if that's the case, and we have to start asking ourselves, how are we going to rise above? How are we going to make it through this gigantic hairball that is going on right now? And how is our message going to come across, come across clear? And how is it going to be concise? And how is it going to be targeted and pointed? And what are we doing as a last day people? We need to ask ourselves this question as a church. 
These are things that we, that we talked about on Vision Sunday. We preached it. And we, we talked about uh, uh, how, how vital it was for us to go into the field. And remember, we, uh, I mean, you probably don't remember, but I, I could take some time to remind you. It's been a long year. It's been like, uh, you know, 17 years combined into one, right? So it's been a long year. Um, but, uh, you know, we talked about the different fields that were in the word of the Lord and this field and that field and, and uh, you know, Abraham's field all the way up to the field that uh, Jesus had to go to through the wilderness. And then we talked about the field that that Jesus told us to look to and that that's white and all ready to harvest. And it's, uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, all the fields that were in the word of the Lord. But but here's the thing. Through all of those fields, Jesus gives us this this um, uh, kind of a glimpse that uh, it's not just knowledge of the field that, that is uh, necessary. It's ownership of the field that is necessary. Can we take ownership of all the chaos? Are we willing to buy into what is out there? I'm not talking about let's, let's become all things to all men and let's just... No, I, I, what I'm saying is, is are we willing to, to say that out there has something that belongs to to me if there was ever a more prophetic word that i have ever spoken to this church a single word it is the word treasure in 2020 it has revealed to the church in general what the treasure truly is are we going to be a people that we are sorry we have to take care of ours we are sorry. We don't have time. We don't have a, uh, we don't have a mandate anymore. We, we don't have a responsibility because what is mine needs to be taken care of. Or are we a people that are able to look out in the great cosmos of confusion and we're able to say there is something out there that still belongs to the church. There is something in that field that, uh, that, that if, if I'm intentional about it, I'll stumble upon it one of these days. And it, it may be difficult, it may be trying, but it's out there for us. And, and I believe that that prophetic statement at the very beginning of our church uh, year in 2020, it, it still rings true today. I am more convinced that the harvest is ready for the people of God. I am more convinced now. Not less convinced. I'm more challenged now, not less challenged. I'm, I'm more passionate now, not less passionate. I'm more bold now, not less bold. I, I believe in the calling of this great assembly. Amen. And I believe that God is waking this church up to the need to get into a prayer room and a prayer closet and shake themselves until we feel the direction in the hands of God upon our life again. And, and I'm telling you, if you don't feel it, uh, you better get ready because we are opening the doors uh, like we have never opened the doors to the things of God. 2021 for the church today. This isn't the Vision Sunday, but I'm closing this thing out with fervency. I'm closing this thing. I'm putting a stamp on 2020, and I'm telling you what's ahead for this great assembly. We will be known as a house of prayer. We will be known. We will make room in this church like we have never made room. You will hear about it. You will read about it. You will see it. Uh, you will feel it. You will experience it. Uh, I'm telling you, this place will be a place of prayer. Why? Because I believe that the treasure that is in the field will be discovered by those that are really intentional about it. I believe in the last day that we are going to have to be intentional. We're going to have to be bold. We're going to have to rejoice when there are things that are that 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 are the things that come against us. Uh, we're going to have to be like the disciples were, that when they suffered at the hands of men, they rejoiced and they were able to say, well, we are people that God thinks so much about that he would allow us to go through this. Uh, we have suffered in ways for him and we rejoice for that. This is going to be the age of the end uh, and we're going to have to be all right with that. It's not going to be easy. You may not like your freedoms infringed upon. I'm sorry. That's the end times. Uh, but we've got to start uh, being so passionate uh, that we are blinded to everything that is out in the world. And we are so targeted in our approach. This is the hour for the people of God. 
Woo, you're not here in this building, but I feel your desire here with me today. I feel the fervency of your prayers coming. And some of you have talked to me about them. Some of you have, have painted your face up. Uh, and you, uh, you have said that I'm going out. Uh, and I'm going to do in the spiritual what you see. Some of us are warring for those that are around us. This is a changing hour for the church. Uh, I feel the, the bells of the Lord going off saying the time is short. Uh, and this is the final hour. And get out there and work while it's still yet day. And work we will, I promise you that. Uh, treasure is not going to be the theme for 2021. But I'm reminding you that the treasure is still out there. It's still there. Whether in this nation or nations beyond, I will tell you that we will not only be known as a church that prays, we will be known that, a, that we are a church that gives. 2021, we will give like we have never given before. I promise you that. Uh, I will not be caught at the end of days. I will not be, be pulled up into glory with hundreds of thousands of dollars stocked away in CDs when they could have been invested in foreign fields. Uh, I'm telling you, we will give like we have never given before. We won't give irrationally and we will not give disobediently, but we will give. And as long as the Lord says yes, uh, we will keep giving. We will be known not only as a church that prays, we will be known as a church that gives. Uh, I want, I would love that this church gave 50% uh, of its, uh, uh, of all of its monies. I wish that this church would give 50% away, yay 60%, that God would bless our congregation in such a manner that we were living, that we gave more than we, we held in this house. Uh, I'm telling you, it's that type of church in the final hour that is going to see the treasure in the field I hope you're hearing me in your world I'm telling you I am dead serious I believe that this is going to be the year of miracles for the church the church in general and we're going to see it at the church today we're going to see it in this house Woo! we're going to be known as a church not only that prays not only that gives but that operates in the supernatural and that's going to be costly that's going to cost us something that's not going to come easy that kind of thing doesn't just flop into a church you've got to spend time you've got to be willing you've got to be you've got to be consistent you've got to be faithful but that's the kind of church we're going to see miracles in this church we're going to see healings in this church we're going to see baptisms in the name of jesus christ that is supernatural by the way if we didn't know that it is supernatural we're going to see people go down in the water this year in 2021 like we never have before i believe that this year we're going to see, I believe that this year we're going to see one person a week go down in the water in the name of Jesus. Why? Because our treasure is not in this home, it's out in this field. Reminding you of the treasure, reminding you to hold it close. I want you to understand something. This is not a gimmick, it's not a game to him. That's why he said the parable in Matthew 13, 44. I feel the power of God moving through me right now. Matthew 13, 44, he said again, so I preach it right now. Again, we've talked about this. We talked about it at the very beginning of the year. Again, he said, we talked about it in July. I preach treasure, if you don't remember. And again, I preach it unto this great congregation of believers. The third time, not only did we, we spent months talking about this on Wednesday night, I'm preaching it again because he says again. We need to be reminded of these things. You need to be reminded of who you are. You're a laborer. You're a laborer. You're a laborer. That's who you are. Well, I'm a child. Well, you're a laborer. Well, I'm a son, but you're a laborer. Let us not forget that it was the prodigal son's older brother that was in the field working. He was his father's laborer. Just because he was a son doesn't mean he wasn't out taking care. He might have been facilitating the servants. He might have been checking the grains, making sure the fences were all right, what places need to be mended. He might not have been down there on the, uh, uh, on the grunt work, but he was out in the field. He was far enough away to hear songs and not understand 
understand what was going on. He had spent enough time in the field to understand that we are, we are a wealthy family. And you're allowing that, uh, that child to come back. He was a, he was a laborer. And we're not going to get away from that. Uh, we are laborers. Uh, so why are you saying that, Pastor? I'm saying that because of this. Uh, this thing's not going to come free. It's not going to come free, and we're going to have to work it up. We're going to have to work out our own salvation right now. We're going to have to, we're going to, have to uh, spend some time uh, uh, you know, getting that spiritual physique right so that we can, we can stand to go out against the enemy. We're going to have to put on the helmet of salvation. I wish you were in this building right now because you'd be on your feet. I, I wish that, that we would spend some time putting on that breastplate, that we would not be so easily offended in 2021. And, and, and I wish some, some of us would put on that belt no shoes and hold that sword and that shield and be we would be ready i'm telling you this is going to be a church that is known not because we need to be famous that's not what this is about but we're going to transmit everything unto him we're going to we're going to push everything up for the glory of god i don't need i don't need my name in lights but what i need is for him to be glorified and he is when i'm out in that field he said again the kingdom of heaven is like Unto treasure hid in a field. It is hid. It's not easy. It's not just laying there. A laborer is going to have to find it. We're going to have to find it. Woo! We're going to have to find it. He said, well done, thou good and faithful. Servant. Servant. Challenging all of our leaders today. Man, I'm stirred today. I wish you were in house and the, and the camera was off. Because then I could just feel like I could really just go after this thing. But I'm challenged today for our great leaders. We have got to step into places of authority. The days of two or three or four being... Uh, you know, being men and women of true prayer and passionate intercessors is over. The days of trying to get something just looking good on paper is over. I'm all about this, but this is not what's going to take the church of the living God. I'm telling you, the church of the living God is going to be built on the same principles that that initial church was. It might look different, but it's going to be built on the same principles. He doesn't use uh, new stones in this day that don't fit that old pattern. Absolutely not. Every stone is going to be filed out and fit just right. Uh, and this is a continuation of the cornerstone that was placed there a long time ago. We're not going to be some new design for an old place. Absolutely not. He'll chisel it away and it'll fit our culture, but it's here. It's built upon the same principles, and we've got to get those principles into action, and we've got to pray like never before. We've got to believe like never before. We've got to worship like never before. But that sounds like things that we've been doing for a long time, and it works. It works. It works. Guys, it's hidden the field. When a man have found, see, he hides it the second time. It was hid. Nobody else saw it. He looks around. He takes that coverage and he puts it down. He probably takes a couple leaves here and there. He presses it right over and he skips on. He begins his work again. And he memorizes landmarks. I remember it's here and it's here. It's this far away from here and that far away from here. And he notices people coming down the way. And he goes over there and he begins to talk to them. And he gets them off course a little bit. Yeah, I got this area. You go on over there and get that. He's protecting that. He knows how valuable that is. He's not going to let anybody else steal that thing. That's the way the church today ought to be. Nobody is going to take what belongs to the church. And if we get that kind of attitude, I'm telling you, if we get that kind of attitude, we will be overflowing and overrunning as a people in this last hour. Nobody could take that from the first century church. You could steal it from the first century church. You persecuted them. They just ran further out and began the same thing over and over and over and over again. They begin to say, it's, in, it's here, it's here. This is it, this is it, this is it, this is it. And when they were persecuted, they went further. And when they were challenged and arrested, you could shut them up. Paul 
when he was in prison, they had to change the guards every few hours. Get him in, get him out. Get him in, get him out. Get him in, get him out. Because Paul kept saying, oh, fresh meat right there. Hey, what's going on? Let me tell you about this gospel. Let me tell you what this is all about. He was not ashamed no matter who he was with. He was not ashamed. This is an hour the church today cannot be ashamed. Uh, we cannot be ashamed. Uh, can't be ashamed. I don't want them to be a witness against me in the last hour, but he, he worked with me. He worked with me. He never mentioned anything about God. He never mentioned anything about saving truth. It's up to, it was his fault. Stand. I didn't know. I, didn't, I felt like that they wouldn't want to receive it. I felt like they wouldn't. But you never even, listen, this is what he said. You hid it. You hid it. You hid it. You didn't even try to put it to usury. You hid it. And because you hid what I gave you, we have to be willing to give this thing out. We have to be willing to, 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 to give this thing out. And I'm telling, in these last days, God is opening all of our eyes to the field. Back to the field. Back to the field. That man said, no one is going to take what I found. It takes, that's intentional. That's strategic. You, you've got to position yourself and you position that. And, 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 and he goes and, 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 and when he leaves the field, the Bible says, and for the joy thereof, he sells everything he has. Mama, sell it. Yeah, that's valuable. That's a family heirloom. You don't even understand what's coming. You don't even understand what's next. You don't even understand what's out there. You don't see what I saw. You don't understand what I saw. And there's going to be people in 2021 in this church that don't understand what we're doing. And we can't allow that to change, to dictate, to mandate. I'm not saying we're throwing caution to the wind, but what I'm saying is we're getting into the book and we're devising battle plans and strategies that are based off the word of God and he's going to give and he's going to bless and he's going to open doors. 2021 will be the greatest year that the church today has ever experienced. It will be the greatest year. And for the joy, and for the joy, and for the joy said, I'll give everything I have. I'll give everything I have. But this is your home. It's been, <laughs> I give it all. You don't understand. What's out there is way better than what I have in here. What's out there is way better than what, what I've been holding on to a long time. And Jesus looked at that rich young ruler and he said, I'm not going to challenge you on what you've done from your youth up. I'm not here to, to try to say, well, I remember. No, 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 it doesn't make a difference. What I'm saying is, is you lack something. Let me reveal to you what is holding you back. Let me reveal to you what is keeping you. Let me reveal to you that which has got you cemented. And, and let me reveal so that I am able to get you into a position and a place where we can make a trade. That's what he said. He said, let's make a deal. You give me and I'll give you. Oh, I don't need your money, but I need you to give. So in essence, give, give me. Give it to me. And here's my word. Go and sell and come and follow. That was an open invitation. We have to understand there was significance there. Jesus saw something there. Jesus looked at him and was giving him an opportunity. Was it potentially, or was it the potential that that was the 13th disciple? Or was that a disciple that would have been able to follow in the 70 and perhaps would have been am amongst the numbered uh, that, that, that cast the lots at the, at the very end and, and, and was able to fill the 12th man's position that hung from a tree? Come and follow me. And if you, if you could see the value that I have, and we can't stop. We've, we've, got, we were, we've got things that we're holding on to, and we can go down a laundry list, and it's dangerous to do that. Some of it's good, and some of it's bad. Some of it's great, and some of it's terrible that we're holding on to, and we're not willing to trade. But you lack something. You've been addicted for so long, and if you give it to me, I will trade you, and I will make you to become. You don't even understand, but I can't get rid of that. Some of it's great. We, 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 we're holding on to traditions. We're holding on to glories of yesterdays, and, and God's saying, fine. You've been given riches, and I've given you miracles, and I've given you blessings, and there was a season in your life where I allowed you to 
do that, but I need you to trade that now. I need you to get rid of it now. And I'm telling you, if you follow me at this moment in time, When you follow me, I promise you there will be treasures in heaven. And the man walks away and says, I can't, I can't see that far away. The demise of the 21st century church is we're short-sighted. We can't see that far away. We don't know how to make a trade because, because I've got to trust that you will give me that. And I've got to trust that you will lead me there. And I've got to trust that you will open those doors for me. And I know what doors I can open right now. We're too short-sighted. We don't, we don't see far enough in the distance. We're not willing to make the trade. Sells all that he has. Then he makes one joyful move. He goes out. He talks to the landowner. And he says, I want to buy that field. I want to buy that field. I'm not looking to buy the treasure. I want the field. Because you can't get one without the other. You can't buy the treasure and get the field. You've got to buy the field to get the treasure. So if you're going to buy the field, I'm just going to tell you in 2021, it's going to get ugly. Because there's the field out there. Huh? <laughs> With the field comes work. With the field comes uh, uh, labor. With the field comes, uh, but, but I'm telling you what's in the field. But yeah, but you don't understand. There's hurt out there. Yeah, that's part of the field. There's disappointment out there. You're right. It's part of the field. There's pain out there. You are absolutely right. There's, there's laboring under the sun with, 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 with little results. There's days and nights where you don't get to sleep because you're concerned about what's going to come in and try to steal. Where you're, gonna, you're concerned with what's going to come in and try to destroy the field. And so you're just out there pacing in the field. And I'm telling you, it's not easy. And God's never, never, never promised the easy road. But what he said is, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you and, and I'll be with you. And you you can make your bed in the lowliest of places and I'll be a comfort to you down there. And what we need to understand is we've got to get out to the field. The calling in 2021 is no different than it was 2020. It's out to the field. You've got to purchase the pain. Jesus was old enough, he described to his mother when she proposed a question, why did you do this to us? He said, I must be about. He said, did you not know that I would be in my father's house? But what he was saying was, in essence, I'm, I'm about my father's business. And at 12 years old, he understands, he sees a Calvary in the distance. At 12 years old, he sees a Calvary in the distance. Bible says he sets his face as a flint. Nothing's going to deter him. Not 16, not 17, not 19, not the death, uh, not life, uh, not persecution. Nothing, nothing, because I know what is in that field. He sets his face to the field that holds the Calvary, that, that, that takes him into the afterlife. It's the field. But he sets his face in that direction in 2021. We better get our face towards the field because that's where we're headed. I'm telling you, this ship is just turned in the direction of the field. You're going to hear about it till we're sick of hearing about it. We're not going to uh, damage the body. We're going to encourage the body. But I feel the turn in the Holy Ghost because time is of the essence. And God has said, I've given my church a, a space long enough. Now turn the direction towards the field. Because it's there that you'll find the treasure. The problem is, is that the church focuses here so much, here so much, here so much. Hear so much. Uh, and, and sometimes we run out of emotional currency and we run out of physical currency and we run out of uh, mental currency and spiritual currency. We're broke. We're just dead broke. Uh, we don't have any more space. We don't have any more currency. We don't have any more to give. Uh, but, the, but the issue is, is the treasure is what's going to fund. 
God set it up in such a manner that when we're out in the field, uh, we're working, but we're healthy. Our muscles are getting stronger. Our mind is getting developed. Uh, our spirit is getting developed. Uh, and we're broke right now because we're not in the field like we should be in the field. And the treasure is the payment. <laughs> Woo. The field. In all actuality, I am four slides into a 19 slide message. That's dangerous. So let me give you the four keys again. And I'll ask my wife to come to the piano. The four keys to the treasure. We reviewed in length. We went over this about three or four months. Spent a lot of time talking and dealing with the treasure. But according to Matthew 13, 44, here are the four keys that you'll find in that verse. First, the treasure is hidden. <laughs> Second, the treasure is discovered. Third, the treasure is costly. And fourth, the treasure requires ownership. Proverbs chapter 2 says, If you seek it like silver and search for it as for hidden treasures. You don't get the wisdom, the treasure of the field, if you're not willing to seek and to search. Deuteronomy 29 says the secret things belong to the Lord. Hear that verse now. The secret things belong to the Lord our God, but the things revealed belong to us. <laughs> and to our children forever. And it is hidden. But when we find it, that's ours. And it not only belongs to us, but it belongs to our kids. What's out there belongs to us, to our kids. Treasure, when it is discovered, woo, belongs to us. Jesus would encourage his people. Keep on asking in Matthew 7 and you will receive. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the doors will be open to you. And can I take a pause and tell somebody that I feel in the Holy Ghost uh, that you are discouraged about your children. And I'm telling you right now, you pick up the keep on asking again. You keep on knocking. You keep on seeking. You're going to find what you're looking for. You're going to find uh, that they will come back if you keep on asking. I'm telling you, we're quitting shy of the miraculous. Come on, leaders, don't be, don't be tired of picking up that mantle and slapping that water and getting no reaction. You keep slapping that, and you keep saying, where is the God of my predecessor at? You're tired of praying for your physical ailment, I'm telling you, there's a treasure on the other side. You keep on pursuing God. First Chronicles says, Now set your heart and soul to seek the Lord your God. Jeremiah the weeping prophet says, it, You will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. The treasure is costly. You're going to have to go and you're going to have to sell. Ask Joseph if the treasure was costly. Ask him if the answer to the dream was costly. Ask him if it cost time with his father. Ask him if it cost time in relationship with his brethren. Ask how many days he missed. How many birthdays he missed. How many celebrations he missed. Ask him if it was costly. costly 
want to sit on your right and left, Jesus said to them, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to drink from the bitter cup of suffering I'm about to drink from? It's costly. It's not easy. 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 28, Paul describes how costly I've worked much harder, been in more prison more frequently been flogged more severely, been exposed to death again and again. It's costly. Five times I received from the Jews the lashes, 40 minus one. Three times I was beaten with rod. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have been consistently on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, from, in danger from the Gentiles, in danger in the city, in the country, at the sea, in danger of the false believers. I have labored. I have toiled. I've gone without sleep. I, I have been hungry, thirsty. I've gone without food. I've been in the cold. I've been naked. Besides everything else, I face the daily pressure of my concern from all the churches. It's costly. But it's worth it. Reviewing a book. It's wrecking me. Read it years ago and I needed to read it again. It's recentering me. The insanity of God got a hold of me. I saw it on my shelf and I picked it up again. I began to read it and I just weep and weep and weep. Not because of the guilt that sometimes flows through my mind, but rather because of the fact that I know that the calling on my life is no less important than the calling on that man's life. He recounts stories. Read the book, please, if you haven't read it, The Insanity of God. It's a recentering book. It's not about gaining knowledge. It's about feeling conviction. And that's what we need in the 21st century. Conviction. We don't need more knowledge. We're overrun with knowledge. We need conviction. We don't need better ways to get out to the field. We just need the, the conviction to go. Do we not have the tools? Go. Love your neighbor as yourself. You don't need knowledge of how to do it. Just love them. How? Like you love yourself. Don't ignore them. Don't act like they don't exist. Signs on every corner hungry, jobless, broken, divorced work for food? Do we look past it at the next red light? I understand how difficult it is to discern what that money is being used for, and I'm not asking you to give your life savings. But do I even give God the opportunity to move upon me? When I look at them, do I see the need? Or do I see the want? They just want another addictive measure. Or do I see the need? The gospel that I have could change their life. If I'm not willing to look at my neighbor, I'm sure not willing to step foot on another continent and bless somebody else. Forget about it. The church has to be filled with conviction. In this book, he recounts hundreds of stories that will just absolutely bless your life. One in particular I reread just the other day. It talks about a Russian preacher back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, somewhere back then. Maybe even back in the 50s. But he was taken from his wife and son and they were relocated. He was put in a prison. They were relocated to a small cabin in Siberia basically to starve them out to, to just not to kill them but to allow the elements to do so and they were starving 30, 40 miles in the most severe conditions out in the middle of nowhere they were drinking their last bit of tea and eating their last bit of crust before they realized the harsh snows had set in there was no way survival was 
going to happen. And so here they are. She tucks him into bed at night. And she begins to pray together. They thank God for the opportunity to have served him. 30 miles away, the Lord wakes up, minister of a local church in Siberia. Imagine that, small little community. He said, I need you to hitch your horse up to your, to your sleigh, and I need you to go into the direction of this home, and I want you to give them all the food that your church has collected, in which the the pastor there says, Lord, you know it's the middle of the night. It's sub-zero temperatures. My horse will probably not make it. And if I make it there through the cold, you know the wolves are out. And it, it, anything dangerous, if I make it there, there's probably no way I would ever be able to make it back. I cannot go. You will go, he said. I cannot go because look at all the, you will go, but I may not make it back. And here's what the Holy Ghost told this man. I'm not telling you. Or I'm not promising you that you'll make it back. But I'm promising you, you'll make it there. And so in essence, what the Lord was trying to convey was, I'm not telling you that you have to come back. I'm telling you, you have to go. Am I willing to live in that type of realm where I'm so challenged? So convicted, no matter what, I'll go, despite ever the promise of coming home safely. It's costly. Can I remind this church that we do not get the treasure without the field? Stand with me in your homes today. Many of us probably have held on to this little coin. I'm pulling mine out of my pocket today as a reminder of what is out there. I'm asking you to pray with me as my wife leads us in a time, in an altar experience. I'm asking for an altar experience in your home. Do we have to be here to have an altar experience? Or can the Holy Ghost call us once again? I'm asking God to wake the labors up. Wake, wake the leaders up. What are we doing? What are we waiting on? Come on, 2020 is upon us. Excuse me, 2021 is upon us. I need a fresh reminder as we go what's out there. It's not all just labor. It's not all just selling out. Oh, no. Don't you believe for one moment that all your work is going to come up empty-handed. No, don't you believe that all your prayers that are being prayed aren't stored up in the heaven. Don't believe that every tear that you've ever shed is not bottled up and will be poured out onto those dry grounds one day. Don't believe that because those, that's the lie of the enemy. No, there's a treasure out there. There's a treasure out there. If it's four people in your labor, I'm telling you that's four people that you're going to hold hands with and cross over into the new divine. And God, one of these days, I'm going to be able to know they wouldn't be here without me. It wasn't me who saved them, but I spoke out. It wasn't me who filled them with the Holy Ghost, but I taught them. It wasn't me, God, that ultimately placed my name upon them. No, it wasn't it. But I was the one that conveyed. I was the one that stayed up at night praying. I was the one that wouldn't give up. Come on, somebody. We need to find ourselves in a place and let the fresh convictions of the Lord flow over us as we did at the very beginning of this year. So let us do now. Find a place would you kneel down. Find a place would you begin to cry out unto the Lord for the next couple of moments. Come on, let the Holy Ghost come into your home. Let your kids see that the, the burning desire, the passion of God is flowing through your mouth, through your heart, across your lips. As you groan and utter things to the Lord, why don't you just begin to pray? How long has it been since you've cried out for the world that's around you, your job? How long has it been since we've, we, we've begun to call out the names of our family members? Come on, somebody. The treasure's in the field right now. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up on your coworkers. Don't give up on that mission. Don't give up. 
God's calling you to start a church, don't give up on that. God's calling you, don't give up on that. Look forth in his wonderful face. In the things of earth will go straight. He did. Praise God. Thank you, God. I feel a fresh conviction in my spirit. I pray that that has crossed through these airwaves into your home, into your heart. Jesus, prepare us for the days ahead. Prepare us for the days ahead. Oh, sweet Holy Ghost. God. Just trying to be sensitive to the Lord right now. 
now. Very heavy presence. Very, very heavy presence in this church today. be passive. I don't believe we're meant to be passive, so please, please, very bold as you approach the Lord. He's going to lead you, okay? I promise you, He's going to lead you. Amen. He's going to work His way through confusion. I feel that in the Holy Ghost. He's going to work His way. He's going to work His way through confusion. It's not going to make it. It's not going to be difficult to discern the mind and heartbeat of God as He has given us insight in his word the last day he said come if you want to come there's work in my field and I'll pay you so much very clear very clear God's going to be clear in his last day he's going to be very clear we'll tune out what we need to tune out and tune into what we need to tune into we will hear the clear word of God encourage you to do whatever is necessary for that to take place in your life. Amen. Thank you again for tuning in. Um, please be advised for the upcoming announcements about this coming Sunday, a week from. And uh, I know you'll be blessed by that. Looking forward to seeing everybody, Lord willing. And uh, we'll give out all the details on that, okay? Amen. Please remember to be faithful in your tithing and offering. It's such a blessing to be a part of a church like this. It doesn't um, hesitate to be faithful to the things of God. I love you. I miss you. I'm looking forward to seeing you. God bless each and every one of you. Again, thank you for everybody that has uh, been so diligent in making this take place this month. And we are looking forward to kicking everything off. Praise God. You matter. You know that to this church. You know you matter to me and my wife. And I pray blessings on this new year. Spend some good time with your family. And we'll see you soon, okay? God bless you. We'll see you in Jesus' name.